And so I did not get out, out of the bathroom in time to get the bus I wanted, but I can't go out next week, at least not to uh, Necto on Monday night, because Labor Day, and the bus here doesn't run on Labor Day. So I'm going out just for the sake of going out, even though it's going to be pretty damn late, but whatever, that happens sometimes. So, um, hey, Captain. So, uh, so what all else was I going to say? I, I think in some ways things are a little bit easier and more accepting um, than they once were um, in the uh, goth community even, but it's a, it's no guarantee. Uh, people in this subculture can be very individualized, um, regardless of various things. Like, I've, I, I've seen people who insist that Rubella Ballet is one of their favorite bands, and, you know, this is their, their anarcho-socialists, and yet they the person telling me that they love Rubella Ballet is all like, raw, raw, libertarian, Gary Johnson, rah, rah, rah. So I'm like, honey, do you even listen to their music? So, um, right, kitten. Um, now, I have, um, it's one idea for why do I think, um, there is, a relatively disproportionately high number of LGBT people represented in the uh, goth subculture. High, yes. It's because of fluffer bottoms. No, it's because I think, I think it ends up being because regardless of what a lot of people think, um, there is some connection between the music and the gothic literature movement as well as other gothic artistic movements of years and decades and even centuries past. Um, my friend Adrienne she's, says she's working on a video um, detailing all of this. That makes goth unique as a subculture in that, unlike heavy metal, where you can say it has connections to other movements, like with horror or, um, depending on the um, subgenre of metal, you know, um, the occult and stuff, um, it's a bit less clear than it is between um, goth and other, uh, the gothic uh, music subculture and other gothic art movements. You know, punk, you can see a lot more clear connections to politics, but not an especial lot as far as art movements go. At best, punk can find connections to the visual arts through, like, Dada, where it's little more than artistic trolling, <laughs> which is one of the things I love about Dada, but that's another story for another time. So, um, I, I've come to the conclusion that you see a disproportionate amount of LGBT representation amongst goths because, uh, especially in the States and the more, um, uh, and the more religious communities in parts of the UK and Ireland, or being told that something that, to your experiences, is an inherent part of who you are, whether that is being attracted to people of the same gender, uh, be it as gay, lesbian, or as bi, pansexual as bi, roast me if you want to, it the, means the same thing, literally every definition but that tries to make the two sound distinct basically says it's the same thing but whatever. Um, or if you're trans, or both, you're being told that there's something about you that is sick and wrong and creepy and especially during the rise, uh, the rise of the um, AIDS and HIV pandemic in the early 80s, which is about when goth was coming about, being LGBT was seen as something inherently scary and frightening and horrid. In fact, uh, I've got a friend who loves the film The Hunger, but, I mean, he is bisexual, 
He's also trans, and his wife is also bisexual, but she's cis. But he has he has this great um, commentary about how the hunger, or at least the film version, because it was a novel first, but at least the film version with David Bowie and uh, Susan Sarandon, I believe. I've got it. It's been forever since I've seen it. It's one of those movies that it just like goes at a snail's pace through like half of it, and then it picks up about two-thirds of the way through. And thankfully for me, like, what finally grabbed my attention was when it gets all artsy-fartsy towards the end. I love that shit. I've got every film by Derek Jarman he ever made. Obviously, I love this artsy-fartsy nonsense, but but that's beside the point. So my friend has gone on. He, he's gone on at length about me, about how the film version of The Hunger is basically an allegory about the early days of HIV, and I forget exactly how he was, how he phrased it all, you know, or else I would have, you know, said so. But, you know, so he, so he sees, you know, some parallels between what most people read, you know, from watching at least the film version of The Hunger, about, uh, you know, like a later-in-life lesbian allegory. So they're seeing this, you know, in this way. But he's seeing this in a way that still relates to the LGBT community, but is also, like, more locked into the time and place when the film was made, which was, like, what, 1982-83? Um, Cross-production between the U.S. and U.K., I believe. And this is where I see, like, this is why I think that you see LGBT people, like, disproportionately highly represented in the goth community, because um, goth came about at this time when being LGBT was seen as not only religiously perverse, but morally outrageous and arguably horrifying to people. Like, oh gosh, like the earliest um, victims of HIV in the music scene, um, you know, as recording musicians, uh, were uh, Jobriath and Klaus Nomi. A lot of people say Klaus, Klaus Nomi was first, but it was like, no, it was Joe Bryath by a couple of weeks. Granted, he was performing under a different name at the time and pretty much just in, like, piano bars, but still. It was, Joe Bryath was the first recording artist with any kind of international recognition who succumbed to HIV complications uh, by only, like, a couple weeks. But that cat, seriously? That's, that's why I think it, it, uh... You know, goth has been um, disproportionately welcoming to LGBT people and has felt like a welcoming place because, you know, if your parents and your classmates and if you're a young adult fresh out of school working a shit job at, you know, like some boutique in London or, you know, the grocery store in some little bumfuck town in the middle of... Idaho, like, uh, like Dame Darcy, and I think she's bisexual, openly so. Um, but yeah, you, uh, you know, you're surrounded by all of these messages that, you know, there's something about, you know, this, this thing that you identify, you know, as an intrinsic part of who you are, being your sexuality or your gender or both, as in my case, and you see all these messages about how horrible it is to be this thing. So you naturally feel a desire to gravitate toward something that, yeah, like this music and the subculture with all of its fashions and its delightful entertainment of the morose and the macabre, you know, with all of the, you know, it's like bringing the gothic novels into the subculture as well and, um, you know, reciting Edgar Allan Poe poetry in the cemeteries at midnight and, and reading the latest Anne Rice and Storm Constantine novels. You're, you're going to gravitate toward a subculture that entertains, you know, that it's okay to be you know, morose sometimes. It's okay to have this, this dark, this, this darkness, this, it's okay to sometimes terrify people because in that terror can be something beautiful and unique and inspiring. So, so yeah, I, I mean, I do think things have gotten better and you know, like with everything, like when it gets a lot more popular, of course you get the, get the goddamn douche bros 
like, you know, like Combat Christ, you know, all messed up in the scene. Yes, I know that's an industrial band. Just the goth and industrial music as a club scene have been intertwined since the days of the Batcave. So, um, but yeah, so like, you know, it, when it gets more popular, of course, you know, you get these morons in the scene, you know, being homophobic and transphobic and all of that. And... Um, and that can make things feel just awful at times, but, you know, then the, uh, then the fad kind of wanes down and the people who are genuinely into it always stay. We always stay. We may even take a few years off from time to time, but we end up back because this is just who we are as much as being gay or trans is. So, all right, I gotta go put on boots and a jacket and get going to the club because that's what I want to do tonight. I don't care how late I'm going to be. All right. Bats and kisses. Take care. Bye-bye.